Welcome to ATCM. Today, we're going to discuss a case about an 80-year-old male who was brought in your ER with complaints of fever for the past one day, right-sided weakness for the past five days, and history of heart attack mental state. So, shall we begin? Okay. Sir, an initial assessment, patient was on a trolley, was uh, drowsy but arousable. Arous- arous- <coughs> Coming to airway, airway was patent and uh, uh, certain minimal secretions were noted. Uh, in breathing, but air entry was Bilaterally equal, respiratory rate of 18 per minute and saturation of 96% in maintained room air. Circulation but BP of 2, 210 over 110 was and noted and, 210 over 110. And, and pulse rate of 85 per minute. <coughs> uh, GCS wise, uh, uh, GCS was E3, V5, M6 initially and pupil of 2 mm bilaterally reactive. And temperature was uh, elevated uh, to uh, 101 degree Fahrenheit. We are, uh, in adjuncts, uh, GRBS was 120 mg per deciliter. ABG showed no acid-based derangements. Uh, potassium was 3.8, sodium of 124 in uh, the uh, ABG and creatinine of 1.42. Lactate was 1.5 in the ABG. Uh, ECG was showing uh, T inversions in lateral leads, which was uh, pre- on the previous ECG patients. Previous ECG was also showing the same, similar changes. Uh, sir, uh, in the secondary survey, in the moving on the secondary survey, a patient is a known case of hypertension, CAD, uh, by, uh, BPH and bipolar disorder. On uh, t- tab, uh, olanzapine 5 mg, uh, half n- at night dose and uh, valproate 250 mg, BD, isosorbate dinitrate 10 mg HS and uh, atorvastatin. Isosorbate dinitrate 10 mg HS. Yes, uh, night dose has to take it, sir. Uh, atorvastatin 10 mg and uh, uh, metoprolol 50 mg uh, BD uh, half dose and clopilet, uh, clopilet also as- and uh, with the aspirin. Now right now patient came, came with complaints of fever since the uh, since uh, past one day. It was an acute onset high grade fever continuous in nature and uh, associated with chills uh, and uh, non-productive cough. A patient also had complaints of right upper limb and lower limb weakness for the past 5 days and tremors in the bilateral up uh, tremors of bilateral upper limb since uh, past one day and patient also gives a history of involuntary maturation with uh, uh, also history of irritability uh, uh, patient was also having irritability issue and suspiciousness of others sir no. So, uh, which uh, brain lobe will be involved mo- normally, this type of characters? Frontal. Frontal lobe. Uh, family history of psychiatric illness was uh, also seen in the relatives, sir. And, sir, in general examination, patient was... Uh, what do you think when you are seeing a patient like this, what may be, what are the differential diagnoses you think? Sir, uh, patient had a degree, high degree of fever with uh, altered mental status and uh, involuntary maturation. Hmm. Sir, uh, patient is also a known case of uh, psychiatric disorder with taking on uh, anti-psychiatric dr- medications. Can have uh, differential diagnosis include uh, new, uh, serotonin syndrome. That is not the first syndrome. Uh, sir, uh, it, is a, it is any infection. Infection, infection. infection is the first thing. Mm. Encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. Whatever mm. may be, it can be septic or uh, metabolic, whatever it is. Encephalopathy mm-hmm. is the first one. Mm. Then? Uh, and then um uh, neuroleptic ma- neuroleptic malignant syndrome hmm. and then malignant hyperthermia yeah. ah, infection. infection brain infection hmm. sepsis brain infection what are it is okay you don't suspect a bleed in the brain patient is having high bp hmm. altered behavior elderly individual very high systolic hmm. bp very hmm. high systolic bp is a risk factor for Uh, intracranial hemorrhage. So, you have to think that. Yes, you know, whether it is there or not, we don't know. We have to do no, investigation. Yes, Sugar? Uh, GRBS of 120 mg per deciliter. Okay. Sodium? Sodium. Uh, initially, ABG was showing sodium of 124. In the, in the routine uh, lab investigation, sodium came out to 132. Okay. Sir, uh, patient was in general examination, uh, 
പേഷ്യൻ വാസ് ഡ്രൗസി അറൈസ് അറൗസബിൾ ആൻഡ് അറ്റൻഷൻ വാസ് നോട്ട് സസ്റ്റെയ്ൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് ഓൾസോ നോട്ട് ഫോളോയിങ് സിമ്പിൾ ഇൻസ്ട്രക്ഷൻസ് ജി ജി സി എസ് ഇനീഷ്യൽ ജി സി എസ് വാസ് ഇ ത്രീ വി ഫൈവ് എം സിസ് വിച്ച് കെ ഓൺ റിപ്പീറ്റഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഇൻ എ ഡിക്ലൈനിങ് മാനർ കെയിം ഔട്ട് ടു ഇ ടു വി ത്രീ എം ഫോർ ഇൻ ദ ലേറ്റർ സ്റ്റേജസ് ഓൺ എക് സീനിയസ് സി എൻ എസ് എക്സാമിനേഷൻ പ്യൂപ്പിൾ വാസ് ബയോലാറ്ററി റിയാക്റ്റീവ് സ്ലഗ്ഗിഷ് ആൻഡ് റിജിഡിറ്റി വാസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് സാർ ദെൻ മൂവിങ് ഓൾ റിജിഡിറ്റി ജനറലൈസ്ഡിറ്റിസ്പെക്ട്രിജിഡിറ്റി വാട്ട് ഓവർ എൻസെഫലോപ്പതി യു ക്യാൻ ഗെറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ ഹാവ് ബട്ട് റിജിഡിറ്റി ഇൻ എൽഡർലി ഇൻഡിവിജ്വൽ ക്യാൻ ബി പാർക്കിൻസൺ ക്യാൻ ദ പാർക്ക് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഹാവ് പാർക്കിൻസൺ പ്ലസ് സിൻഡ്രോം പാർക്കിൻസൺ പ്ലസ് സിൻഡ്രോം ഈസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ സിൻഡ്രോം ഈസ് വിത്ത് ഡിമെൻഷ്യ പാർക്കിൻസൺ പ്ലസ് ഈസ് ദർ ആർ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് അതർ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സ് ബട്ട് വൺ ഈസ് വിത്ത് ഡിമെൻഷ്യ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ പോസിബിൾ സോ വി ഹാവ് ടു കീപ്പ് ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് ഇൻ മൈൻഡ് ഡോണ്ട് തിങ്ക് ഓൺലി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് സെറട്ടോൺ സിൻഡ്രോം ഓർ എൻ എം എസ് ബിക്കോസ് ദർ ആർ വെരി ഹൈ ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ഡയഗ്നോസ് ദ ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ഈസ് Uh, totally different okay. and uh, uh, reflexes part uh, patients bicep triceps supinator reflex was present angle knee knee reflex <coughs> were absent sir and uh, terminal neck stiffness was noted uh, other systems were within normal limits what other system you want to examine this patient you are telling it is nms or something like that yeah uh, uh, anterior no i am asking about an icu uh, what else you can get bp is very high you are thinking autonomic dysfunction how do you examine autonomic system in icu what is you have fluctuating electric and cardiac heart rate cardiac 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 sudden bp rise and fall with it then maybe they have partial also sweating like beyond this okay simple thing is take a prolonged ecg strip normally what will what is a normal response inspiration increases the heart rate mm. expiration decreases the heart rate that will not be there continuously there will be single rate if there is no tachycardia we can easily assess mm. there is tachycardia it is difficult and since the patient is unconscious we cannot do postural hypotension and all sweating you have to see many patients in icu you can see only upper part will be sweating so that is a sign of autonomic dysfunction why we are worried about autonomic dysfunction autonomic dysfunction why we are worried that is so unstable sudden hemodynamic instability suddenly patient will develop tachycardia suddenly they will develop bradycardia hypotension sometimes hypertension so all these things can happen in icu so we have to be very careful sir uh, so initially we had a suspicion of intracranial hemorrhage for the same patient and we uh, we send the patient for ct okay. it came out to be uh, uh, no uh, negative negative sir then uh, we are uh, we also send for mri with the co- contrast also mm. and later on sir uh, there was no signs of any major enhancement were noted mm. then uh, we all uh, uh, we had the other uh, we uh, during that time we initially uh, took the, the blood samples and uh, sent for the protein blood investigations and uh, in it which uh, total count was in normal range 8.7000 it's 8700 crp of 5.2 and uh, hb of 15.7 was mm. and uh, creatinine of 1.24 in the lab values and uh, normally in nms uh, type of disease what will happen to creatinine normally not in all patients what happens Creatinine increases. Why increases? Yeah, abdomen. 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 So, CK will increase. Then that will go to the kidney. It will block the kidney tubules. So, mm-hmm. creatinine naturally will increase in many patients. Here, initial uh, creatinine uh, kinase value was 8, 800, uh, 893, sir. Okay. Does it uh, give a diagnose of uh, NMS? No. It normally, NMS means uh, you get uh, 8,000, 10,000, mm-hmm. like that. 
but uh, sir, patient is just developing NMS, you can get. But suppose you are given already some IM injection, all these things, you can get 800 is possible when you are giving repeated injections itself. Okay. So, NMS, uh, as per uh, diagnostic criteria, uh, this will not come under NMS. We have to go for alternative diagnosis. However, we can continue. And uh, uh, we also uh, send uh, other routine investigation and uh, which in, in, in urine, urine myoglobin mm. came out to be positive. Mm. Then uh, electrolyte sodium, potassium, everything. Uh, so, what do you think? Myoglobin is positive, but uh, uh, CK is negative. Patient may be in recovering phase of this disease. Patient had uh, developed this disease. When they stop it, it patient may recover. So, CK can be still no, uh, normal, but myoglobin will persist for some more time. Okay, if you give uh, IV fluids, elastics and all, that will be removed fast. And uh, on the, uh, the, the on the next uh, days, the creatinine uh, kinase values are in a uh, increasing manner, sir, okay. uh, which uh, increased from 800 to uh, initially uh, 1000, then on the next day up to 2000. 2000. So, slightly it is in here. He is not on statins. Uh, Atorostatin. He was there. Uh. And we continued that or chopped it? We stopped it. We stopped it. So, whenever you are giving elevate, elevation in the creatine kinase, you have to always look for other causes also, especially statins. Then, uh, for as such for the treatment part... Uh, uh, so, how do you treat this patient is eyeing fever? We don't know whether it is NMS or not. We have some clues that it may be N NMS and uh, he has got uh, some other features like high BP is there. That has to be controlled. So, how do you treat this patient? So, uh, for, uh, uh, we uh, initially give IV fluids. Uh, hyd uh, where hydration. Was, hydration was given. Okay. And also, cold compress and tepid sponging was also given. Okay. And, uh, for hydration, how do you give hydration for this patient? What fluids? At what rate? What is end point? What is it? Preferably, we go for balanced crystalloids. Hmm. Like, like, like cabellite or something we can start or even simple NSR we can start but preferably something like a cabellite ah. it's a balanced resistance solution plasma light. Uh, plasma light so then we can start with like 20 ml per kg or something we can start our follow up pattern will be one thing if the patient is one condition where plasma light is contraindicated uh, burns no no there is no con no there is contraindication for plasma light whereas mm. a ringer lactate Mm, yeah, burns or even severe hepatic failure so also. Plasma light is contraindicated if there is a mm. renal failure. Mm -hmm. I'll tell renal failure mm. with, that contains higher magnesium values. Plasma light. Mm -hmm. So if there is a renal failure, mm -hmm. hypermagnesium, you have to be very careful. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, there is no major contraindication for a normal person. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, then thing we will monitor the patient if the patient has developed AK secondary abdominalis, we have to continuously monitor for like improvement in the okay. function okay. also and okay. urinary output also we have to monitor. Okay. And depending on that, we can try to develop fluid resuscitation. Okay. Like that. Uh, and uh, uh, with the hydration and the tepid sponge, the temperature came uh, came down in a minimal manner, but uh, still. Persisting temperature was there okay. at 99 to 100. So, how do you treat this patient? With, suppose you are suspecting uh, NMS. How do you treat? Bromocriptin. What is the dose of bromocriptin? Um, 2.5 milligram. You give 2.5 milligram, just wait, and mm. uh, if the patient is not coming, fever is coming out, TAD also can be given. Okay. Mm. So, bromocryptin has to be started for mm. this patient, and if it is coming down, then it is mostly due to NMS. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then? Then, uh, for uh, this uh, NMS patient, if at all, if it is NMS, there is high chance of can uh, patient can go into a uh, airway compromise you have to watch out for okay why airway compromise yeah. muscle, rigidity. Muscle, rigidity. muscle rigidity okay then uh, what are the differential diagnosis for nms uh, serotonin syndrome how do you differentiate serotonin syndrome to nms so in uh, serotonin syndrome the uh, uh, pupils will, uh, will be midriasis dilated pupils dilated pupils will be not yep. otherwise will be normal in uh, nms 
ഓക്കെ റിഫ്ലക്സസ് റിഫ്ലക്സസ് വിൽ ബി ഹൈപ്പർ റിഫ്ലക്സ് ഇൻ എൻഎംഎസ് വെറസ് ഇൻ ഹൈപ്പർ റിഫ്ലക്സ് ഇൻ സെറോട്ടോണിൻ സെറോട്ടോണിൻ ടെറ്റനസ് ടെറ്റനസ് വിൽ ഹാവ് സിമിലർ ഫീച്ചർ ടെറ്റനസ് ആൾസോ വിൽ കം സെയിം ലൈക് ദിസ് വിതൗട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ആൾട്ടറേറ്റ് മെന്റേഷൻ വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി ടെറ്റനസ് പേഷ്യന്റ് വിൽ ബി ഫുള്ളി കോൺഷ്യസ് ഹിയർ പേഷ്യന്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ഹാവ് കോൺഷ്യസ്നെസ് ഓർ റിഡ്യൂസ് കോൺഷ്യസ്നെസ് അദർ കോമൺ കണ്ടീഷൻ ഇസ് ദിസ് പാർക്കിൻസ് ഓണിസം വിത്ത് സം ഫീവർ സോ ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ദ കോമൺ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ടി ഇൻ എമർജൻസി റൂം പേഷ്യന്റ് വിൽ ഹാവ് റിജിഡിറ്റി ഫീവർ വിൽ ബി ദർ സോ യു മേ തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ എം എസ് ഓക്കെ ബ്രോമോക്രിപ്റ്റിൻ ആസ് എ ഷോർട്ട് ടേം ദർ ഇസ് നോ മേജർ സൈഡ് എഫക്ട്സ് സോ യു ക്യാൻ ട്രൈ ഇറ്റ് ഓക്കെ Oh, what happened to the patient? The patient is in improving state and uh, later on uh, the CPK levels began to reduce and the uh, urine myoglobin also came out to in negative. Mm-hmm. Still uh, in... in oh, what happened to the consciousness of the patient? The patient's uh, DCS also improved. Improved. Okay. What else you want so to do? When, want the patient, to when the patient came actually, uh, we couldn't think about a different, like a huge spectrum of diagnosis. Mm-hmm. One thing is actually, it could be an acute central nervous system infection, like a meningitis, 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 meningitis. That is the thing. All mm-hmm. people, when you are uh, thinking about a case like this, you mm-hmm. cannot tell it is NMS. It mm-hmm. can be NMS. Mm-hmm. But always think about a more serious condition like uh, meningitis, encephalitis. Mm-hmm. And secondary maybe, the next will be a systemic infection like any pneumonia, LRTA or something maybe. secondary causing this kind of uh, toxic and uh, toxic inflammatory and again uh, third maybe some any acute issue like maybe a something or heat stroke or maybe some history like that if there is there that may have caused a hyper uh, hypothermia not on arrival to ER and also maybe acute spinal injury causing or disorder neuro and everything maybe spinal injury uh, maybe in the thoracic thoracic upper thoracic, upper thoracic. there you have this autonomic mm-hmm. nervous system mm-hmm. and also again like uh, as we discussed maybe some acute ic bleed or maybe some secondary uh, seizures or something maybe the patient may be in a postural drowsy phase and again may have caused this kind of first thing and also maybe we have to think about drug intoxication okay. because if it was a young patient we could even think about any recreational drugs mm-hmm. uh, like uh, uh, mdma which can all present with similar Common, symptoms commonly available is amphetamine uh, that have similar findings similar findings the next high ECMD degree fever may or can have similar findings they have tachycardia mm. the profile is waiting with rithi all can be seen this kind of patients and then coming to the drug history why this patient is taking uh, this uh, dopamine anticonvulsant again so we can think about nms mm-hmm. and if we was on any ssri we can think about serotonin also okay. so the classical feature will be like the patient will be present with altered sensorium along with uh, hyperthermia and uh, disorder of this thing regulation and also and to differentiate from the serotonin syndrome the patient's uh, reflex will be like just the opposite in serotonin it will be high in this one it will be like hyperreflexia and the patient may also associate this things like any uh, this thing bowel irritation secondary to like serotonin uh, this thing stimulation the patient may even present with vomiting loose stools and along with fever and all oh. that but classically if the patient is coming it will be difficult to differentiate these conditions because the patient will have a like a similar pattern of disease, this thing so one classical this thing is pupillar reaction oh. because it will be mitriasis in serotonin syndrome man Uh, normal in uh, nms any bleed in the brain can have similar finding uh, because ic blood again can cause this area uh, this thing at um, a degree fever people mm. uh, uh, thalamic bl- thalamic, bl- thalamic bl- on time on time mm. on time hemorrhages can present with high degree fever mm. thalamus also can get but mm. the small people mm-hmm. small people is classic mm. So coming to the management part actually this patient will be like uh, to be uh, like uh, managed from all parts just like an acute infection along with that keeping DD of NMS also so one thing is we stop the probable offending drug which or is taking we stop that drug then basically we send for our routine blood administrations to rule out any other cause of illness and also we start with a blood spectrum antibiotic and we look for any signs of uh, signs of any acute abnormalities or something we start with when you starting antibiotic what will be in your mind what do mm-hmm. you want to cover uh, Uh, preferably like an uh, this thing broad spectrum antibody covering mm-hmm. this thing mm-hmm. what uh, what do you want to cover this thing mainly cns no no you are sus- not suspecting mm-hmm. a cns infection mm-hmm. you are thinking it is nms mm-hmm. then what do you want to cover mm-hmm. you have to okay. cover aspiration pneumonia aspiration pneumonia how do you cover a- aspiration pneumonia to go for plantamycin cover cover means you are preventing it treat not treating you want to cover that means you want to prevent it how do you prevent aspiration pneumonia 
ஆஸ்பிரேஷன் <laughs> 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 So, like, again, this, uh, this so whenever you start uh, a drug, you have to always check that whether these drugs also will produce NMS or not. Mm-hmm. Because we cannot start a new drug that also producing NMS means it will be difficult. Mm-hmm. That we have to check. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, we have to check the patient's entire drug history and the medication is taking to a lot of which drugs can like, trigger the, this thing and remove mm-hmm. it from the interactions. Oh. Interactions are also very important. Mm-hmm. then one thing is uh, fluid resuscitation second the patient might develop arrhythmia secondary to the disorder or limia so mm-hmm. we have to monitor continuous put on continuous simulator and monitoring for both blood pressure heart rate variation and everything and second third will be electrolyte uh, imbalances you can also see in this one which will be hyperkalemia the hyperkalemia then the fourth will be rhabdomyolysis secondary to that causing acute kidney injury which you also have to come to the monitor this patients then we discussed we discussed before because of rigidity the patient may have like impending respiratory failure which can develop in later stages so which also we have to monitor for adequate chest excursions and any variation in the respiratory pattern or any resuscitation anything which we have to monitor this patients then for a post admission we have to like because of this uh, increase like and all we have to like start the dvd profile access and all those medications the patient is not mobilized properly and all that okay. so routine icu patient we have to take care of okay Uh, that will be the basic care of management also if the patient is having concomitant in infection which we have to treat accordingly okay. so this will be the basic line of management so when a patient is coming we have to like instead of damp- jumping to the conclusion we have to think about this broad spectrum and cover all the infection parameters along with that once the, those things are excluded we can put him in the title of nms or serotonin so okay. so final diagnosis here will be nms after rolling out everything, everything. since patient is responding to your treatment then only we can make it as nms mm-hmm. because we are rolling out everything okay mm-hmm. thank you yes.